So, hey guys, Charles Langford here, and today I want to present a video, and I guess I really couldn't call it a video, I want to call it a audio recording of me discussing the topic of finding balance for progress, and this whole balance that I speak of are paradigms or psychological attitudes that you take towards life and the goals in which you want to obtain and how that cycles between an aggressive and a more relaxed paradigm, and I go into detail on this in the video. Uh, two caveats to it. One, I recorded this on a very shitty camera in a field, hence why I just took the audio out of it, because the camera quality was absolutely crap, and even the audio was kind of crap, but I still felt like this was <laughs> something I wanted to deliver to you guys. Second, it's relatively old, and I recorded this uh, about 11 months ago. So with all that being said, I know it's not the quality of work but again I still felt like it was deliverable all right guys see you in the vid another topic that's coming to my mind is my recent fascination with self-development psychology and its significance to my aggression and my outwardly drive in the world and then that juxtaposed with my love for Eastern philosophy Taoism presence and things of inner peace and of the sort. Okay, so to begin with, I guess to explain how I first adapted, or in a sense how both of these jump back and forth all the time, but my significant realization of them happened, let's jump back to childhood, which was a long story in itself. Uh, a lot of rough and key events there, and ultimately, aggression was not on my mind. It was, well, it's probably not on a lot of people's minds, but in a sense, back in childhood, it was presence. And of course, you know, as a child, you could, you could conceive the future and the past, have anxieties and judgments, but on days without those, the potency and the novelty of just day-to-day -day life was so rich that simple memories became much more profound, profound and impressed upon you. Now, you fast forward up until your teenage years, the novelty of life starts to, in a sense, fade. The constrictions and entrapments of society start to loom closer and closer of what kind of job am I going to get? What sort of life am I going to lead? Am I going to have a home, a good wife? Go to the job nine to five every five days a week. Come home, watch TV for the rest of the rest of the fucking day. And this sort of starts to wear on you, and you have to get involved in school assignments that you particularly don't want to do that drain you of your energy, in a sense, inculcate you to a lifestyle that potentially um, embeds and cements you into that of the typical American, or just typical contemporary, uh, complacent lifestyle liver. In the best of ways I can put it, and that was probably put pretty horribly. But just your typical schmo, Joe schmo. Okay. So the anxieties of the world kind of sort start to impress themselves and become upon you. And it definitely did for me. And there were other key events that happened, which I'm not going to go into, which ultimately led to me going down a long, long path of drugs, long, <laughs> long paths of questioning who really the fuck I am at the age of 17, because I noticed a lot of incongruencies in my behavior, um, a lot of realizations, a lot of changes, a lot of depression, um, and emerging from that, uh, me on my path of aggression, my path of self-development. So, just in a sense to recap, in the beginning was peace. Slowly, slowly life kind of drained away at that inner peace, and my response to that was not resourceful. It became one of a downward, downward spiral, and eventually led to the realization of how far downward I was going, and the realization of consciousness, um, how, for instance, unconscious I was becoming, and a fight and claw battle to become the best version of myself that I could be, and then later experiencing the vicissitudes of life, 
or more events of life that would impress me to go or press upon me to go back into the shell of complacency and appreciation and fluctuating between these two is beyond crucial for development and the significance of this is just in day-to-day -day life the world exists because of just simple on and offs and if you really want to go in depth on this topic i recommend picking up the book that's the name of it by alan watts and the full name is the book on the taboo against knowing who you are and he has a whole chapter devoted to the game of black and white the contrast of the universe however when applied you take the contrast the contrasting elements of the universe and apply it to self-development you see that it's just like summer and winter day and night and the vicissitudes of the seasons changing plants and animals to progress evolution to occur and ultimately this is the same thing going on with you as a person now uh, to change oh man I get all off track on these fucking videos real easily so, so to bring up where I am right now my previous paradigm was that of complacency relaxation listening to a lot of Alan Watts a lot of Taoist philosophy a lot of Zen philosophy a lot of acceptance and this came from me trying to become too aggressive into the world getting injured well both physically mentally <laughs> having my ego shattered and coming to a point of acceptance and then a point of in a sense maybe denial re sparking that aggression and attacking things head on so my first and this video is very disorganized but let's go back to my first aggressive moment well this i realized there's a, well there was a point where i realized that I have to take responsibility for myself, my actions, and the world I want to create. And that is a topic which I will cite to the death, or that is a trait in which I will fight to the death, or cite to the death, either or, that someone must develop if they want progress. I, it doesn't matter what aspect of life, if you want to go business, family, finances, um, the gym, your body, whatever goals you want you're gonna have to take responsibility for and whatever degree of success you want to obtain you must subsequently take that degree of responsibility upon yourself to become that person and <laughs> and as tony robbins would say the ultimate change in who you are is your change in identity and if you identify with someone who takes these responsibilities then thus the change will occur now way back in the day i finally did accept this responsibility took these changes, started honing in on my diet, I started running, um, I started trying it really, really, really hard in college, I cut away drugs, I cut away um, and it's things that created deficits in my life, I focused very heavily on trying to always go up, 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 I, I actually got a job while doing school, which is something I didn't want to do, I just wanted to mose about at the house and play video games, and I kept going I kept going with the physical activity I finally get a gym membership I would study harder than ever I would uh, participate in um, in running to a extreme degree I become neurotic where I'd write anything I wanted to remember down during the day I'd go home look it up my wall currently that I do, at this place of residence was covered in papers of topics and ideas which I was contemplating, books to read, key uh, things to remember for radiology, just et cetera, et cetera. I, I just went down a path of neuroticism. We're trying to control every aspect of my life. But it ultimately led to me going a little too hard on running, too hard in the gym. I would injure myself, injured my hip, lower back, and shoulder. Um, I kind of got an inflated ego from my perception of how smart, quote unquote, I was in class. Um, and things would lead to all that, in a sense, getting deflated. And there was a point where, of course, I backed off. I started to get into presence philosophy. 
from, from Eckhart Tolle's Power of Now that led me to going deep into Alan Watts. Alan Watts's version of Dallas and Eastern philosophy brought to the West. And things of the sort where I kind of said, fuck goals, fuck ambitions. I'll be fine just sitting around doing fucking nothing, just enjoying the moment. As long as I keep meditating every day. Um, I'll be fucking fine. Fuck the world. They're a bunch of fucking idiots for getting trapped in that rat race of life. <laughs> and, and, and it wasn't the solution that I was looking for. Okay. Now, every time that I became depressed, I've realized, way back at the age of 17, that the solution to my depression was making progress. And... The lust, and what I've realized recently, is the lust for progress, trying to bite more off the, more than you can chew, leads to you getting fucking injured. Ambition is great, but getting an ego and pushing yourself to destruction just it just isn't worth it. So, must what I've realized is you must come to a balance between. Aggression and relaxation, systole, diastole, light and darkness, however you want to describe it, the yin and the yang. So in short, my biggest piece of advice would, is to acknowledge each paradigm as they are there, and understand that too much indulgence in either a mindset of aggression or a mindset of relaxation will lead to either you injuring yourself or becoming too sloppy. So find a balance between the two and fucking destroy the world.